For those who don't know me, my name is Marky Castle. I have been the copyright compliance um, person for like forever, um, about uh, 17, 18 years. Um, so rumor has it that I retired in June, um, but they graciously asked me to come back um, so that I will be able to, um, th my goal is to get ICC, come on in. My goal is to get ICC weaned off of a copyright compliance person, okay? So I'm gonna be setting things up that you can do your own, um, your own checklist to make sure that you are being in compliance, rather just submitting everything to document services and hoping that, um, hoping that, that somebody will look it over. I will hand these out. I usually don't hand these out till later, but I trust that you will not let this distract you. This is a checklist for fair use. This is a great checklist. Um, and this will be something that I will probably be implementing for people to do when they submit things to document services. So my goal is to make this position not needed. I've heard from a lot of people since I've been back. I just told Ken, I can't go five minutes in the hallway without someone stopping going, oh, you're back, you're back, you know, I have this, I have that. And so we're just gonna see where this goes. I take it one step at a time. Um, I love ICC, I love um, copyright. I know I'm really weird. I was told that I have strange DNA and I'm willing to accept that. Um, but I do love keeping in compliance. But I won't be doing other things around here. I'm no longer teaching. I am just here for copyright, period, um, which makes me happy. So, and, and I really do um, want the best for ICC. Um, so I have 45 minutes, correct? Okay. For um, some of you, I do not want me to stand up here and just go wah, 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 wah. Please let me know if you have questions, even if it's about something with math or whatever, because even though one person may teach something different than the other person, we can often answer questions that other people have. So please stop me. Um, and since we're all adults, you can actually just call out. Let me know. Any questions so far? Copyright and fair use. This is where copyright is defined. It's the Title 17 of the US Code. At this point, it is 326 pages long. Um, that is where I come in. I know what it is. Um, you do not need to know what it is. You don't need to go through. Um, welcome, thank you. Um, and, and so everything that you'd want to know is in the code. Also, you can find the code as well as frequently asked questions, et cetera, in www.copyright.gov. So it's a really good site. Has anybody, um, has anybody received a copyright on anything they've done? Anybody? Nobody has registered for a copyright. Okay, you may want to consider registering some things. You don't need to register everything, um, and we'll talk about things that may be registered. What can be copyrighted? Literary works, musical works, dramatic works, um, all of these things, things that you wouldn't consider. Um, mask works, weave patterns. Um, just to let you know, if you want a copy of the taking pictures, you're more than welcome to take pictures, but if you want a copy of this, just email me. So then you don't have to worry about it. Um, weave patterns, so even in doing looms. Um, mask works like Venice or even New Orleans is getting it, those can be copyrighted. Um, our 
the, um, the, uh, the state mansion in Springfield, uh, the governor's mansion, there is the carpeting in there is actually copyrighted. So back years ago, when the state had money, um, they wanted the carpeting to go with the chandelier. So I was on a, I was with a small group of people who was, that we were taking a tour of it. We were there for a fundraiser and it was just, there were like eight or nine of us and the person said, oh, and this carpeting's copyrighted. And everybody turned to me and said, oh, Marky, Marky. I'm like, oh, so exciting. Um, yeah, that's pathetic. But, um, but it is copyrighted because, and I can't copy that for my home, right? So certain things can be copyrighted that you would not usually see copyrighted. We do know musical works, right? We know that. Um, but there's so many other things. The key concepts here. Don't look at it. The work must be original. Work must be fixed in a tangible medium. So what does that mean? What's a tangible medium? Something, right. Something I can touch, a piece of paper, right? What about tweets? Well, is it tangible? You touch it. It actually is. Now, having said that, because a computer is tangible, right? So somebody who writes a book on a computer, right? Have you ever had a student who wants to only take notes on his phone and that's their whole computer? You know, so back when Twitter was just coming to be, Mark Cuban, we all know him, right? Um, he had tweeted out something and it went viral. And he said, wait, 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 you can't do that. It's copyrighted. Was he correct? At the time, yes. But our culture has shifted so much that now that's well known. So if I write something and it gets retweeted, technically that would have been a copyright infringement. But it is accepted now because of the cultural shift on that. Does that make sense? Um, copyright does not include ideas, concepts, processes, although some of these may be covered by trademark and patent rules, among others. Um, Six Sigma, we had that for quite a while, and that's a process. It doesn't fall under copyright, but it does fall under trademark. Certain things with trademark and copyright, a lot of times I'll be asked, what's the difference between trademark and copyright? So copyright are actually the written things that I said that can be um, caterpillar yellow. We all know what color that is, right? I cannot start a tractor company and use that yellow. That is trademarked. UPS brown, that brown is trademark. Certain things with trademark, um, and you can register for it. It doesn't mean it'll always be accepted. Um, Emeril Lagasse, right, the chef, and he says, Bam, he tried to get that trademarked. It was trademarked. So don't start a cooking show and go, bam, you know, you'll be hauled off into court. Um, Paris Hilton, yes. Going with your emerald example there, Carlton from The Fresh Prince tried to get his dance movie yes. trademarked. Yes, right, and that was just recently. Yeah, because they used it on uh, Fortnite, the video game. That all That's that right. Played. But they denied that. Right, because that's right. That's up to the courts. And thank you for bringing that up. Um, so Emerald can trademark it. The Same courts thing. decide. The thing is, is that's a dance we all. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm more like um, uh, Seinfeld, right? Yeah. Julia Dreyfus. 
<laughs> yeah. Would he have been successful, do you think, had he attempted to trademark his dan dance back in the 90s? And before the cultural shift of the Fresh Prince of No, I think that that, that would have been, time. and that's a good question. I would say no, because there wasn't, so Baryshnikov can do an entire dance, you know, that will absolutely be copyrighted or trademarked because there's more to it than, you know, right? Um, so are we going to do the sprinkler? Well, you know, everybody did that. Um, so I do not think it would have been trademarked back then. But that's my personal opinion. I was kind of surprised that it didn't because Emeril Lagasse gets bam. Paris Hilton tried to get That's Hot, <laughs> and they threw that out. Or so, how Jay Z and Beyonce trademark or copyright their kids' names? Yes, exactly. N names really, you know, there's got to be a purpose behind that. So, can I not name my kid Blue Ivy? Is that, isn't it Blue Ivy or something? Blue Ivy, Chris Chow. I, I can't name them because. Blue and Ivy. So here's. <laughs> um, then there's things that happen, and um, I, I do not want to run out of time, but um, Spoon River, the community college, this was about 15 years ago. They wanted to start, um, they put out to the students, uh, they needed a mascot for their community college, and they decided they did a vote, they took polls, whatever, and they came up with the Mudcats, okay, which is an actual bottom feeder. Whatever, you know, that's their choice. I like cougars, but <laughs> um, that's what they wanted. Well, we had a um, person on staff who was actually on their board, and they got a cease and desist letter for having the Mudcats came from the Carolinas. There is a minor league, do you, okay, called the Mudcats. It's an animal. You know, how many Tigers teams do you know? Cardinals, Bears, Cubs, you know. So she said to me, and I said, I am not a lawyer. I cannot, I would just check with your lawyers, but how much is this gonna cost to defend this? So she went to the lawyers and said, what will this cost? I said, personally, not a lawyer, personally, they don't have a leg to stand on. It's an animal. Now, if they had a drawing or a logo, totally different, right? Now you're, and that's wrong, but it's an animal. And she went to them and they said, it's going to cost $100,000 to defend this. So they decided to put out a new poll and come up with a different, um, and they came up with a non-animal. The Yeah, no, it's, snappers. is it snappers? I thought it was like a tornado or something. It doesn't matter. It's no longer, you know. But you can't trademark an animal. But can you, are you ready to defend it, right? And they went and they said, no, it's not worth it. Um, I do know that the Metamora um, got in trouble because their red birds looked a whole lot like the cardinals. They had to not use that. We have so many things. And usually when I have the students out here, they have their baseball caps on. And you can say, this has been trademarked. This hasn't. Um, or this is a copy. So we pay more for our Cubs logo when it's real. Yes? So I still see the Metamora Redbird. I, I live in Metamora, so I, I see that all over the place. Now. Well, the Redbirds isn't the problem. It's the logo I that still, the, I still see that. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that's. Well, and they may have sent a cease and desist letter and is not following up on it, going. Are, you know, talk about bad press. I don't know why. I, could, but, I agree. It looks like the Arizona Cardinals. Right. Logo. And they should not be doing that. They were sent a cease and desist letter. Okay. 
Um, but they have, I, I was talking, so Super Bowl Sunday, you know, you go to Super Bowl parties. No, you don't, because Super Bowl is trademarked. Okay, so when you say, when you send out invites to all your friends and you say, well, I'm having a Super Bowl party, that's wrong. Um, I read in the paper that when Indianapolis was in the um, Super Bowl, a youth group said, we're having a Super Bowl party, and they were sent a cease and desist letter. And so I was talking about this to one of the classes, and one of the students raised her hand and said, I work for a church here in Peoria. We were sent a cease and desist letter also. And I said, so this must be more you know, pronounced than I really ever knew. And she said, yeah, so they just take it down. We are getting, so ISU got sued for, for showing a movie, a public showing, without getting permission or getting the license for it. I think it was a $7,000 fine for that. Now, how did they get caught? They did it publicly. They did it public, and they put it out. Hey, students, come on and come see this movie. Have popcorn. And they're checking out in Hollywood or Vancouver or Atlanta, wherever they're, they're checking for their stuff. So they were fined for that. Um, when, we have back to, when we have movies, they do pay, and it's about Two fifty, three hundred dollars per showing. It's expensive, but we have to do it. Now that is different than showing something in your classroom. So Kelly, you're in education. If she wanted to show a movie about um, stand and deliver, stand and deliver. That's okay. If you wanted to show stand and deliver, you have a right to. I wouldn't waste two hours on a movie, but that's a whole nother thing. <laughs> that's like a whole week. But if you wanted to watch, if you wanted to, if that was exactly what you wanted, you wanted to show that, you could. You can't charge admission. You can't, it has to be in the classroom, and it needs to be curriculum based. So you can't show Stand and Deliver because it's just an awesome movie. It has to be curriculum based. Then you can do that. And you don't have to pay the $300. Yes? When I was a student leader at ISU, one of the instructors that was mentoring me warned me of the copyright issues Excellent. of a certain documentary screen. That's that because on. you were sued. <laughs> she told me that the Milner Library uh, had acquired the licenses to all the films that they had tangibly in the library and that those yes. are accessible to students, but yes. doing something away from that is what would open up for lawsuits. Right. Does ICC have that, you know? Yes, we oh, do. Perfect. So there are, if they have it in the library, we have a license for it because you can get a license, uh, a general for certain things, but not everything. Also, Netflix and Amazon Prime, have you tried to show something there? You can't do yes. that here. It's blocked. That's because of licensing. And that's all universities, that's not just ICC. So if you wanted to show something, could you still show it? You could go to, I was going to say Blockbuster. They're gone. <laughs> Family video, rent it, come and show it, and take it back. That would be OK. Once again, in your classroom, curriculum base, not charging, but don't show it in the commons area as a back to school fun night. There's a difference. Okay, so YouTube, um, see, I could talk from now until midnight, and I've said that about there's so many yes, but, yes, but. YouTube is wonderful. And in the past couple of years, they have gotten much better about watching what they do. So they do have a licensing for some things. And if it's on YouTube, they have it. But be careful, because if you put it on your Blackboard, and it may not be there two days later, 
because they have taken it down because of infringement on copyright. When I taught and I put things up there, I would say to the students, I can't check this every day. So if it's not there, please let me know immediately because you can't tell. But if YouTube has it, you can show it here on campus. If they have it, you can show it, but be careful because it may not be there. And are you invited? Are we going to get in trouble if they find it's copyright? No, because you've done, you've just shown it. It was good faith, okay. you know, basis that was, there. That, that yes. Good. So you did it knowing that they were policing it. Okay. Um, for the same reason, if I said it was okay, you're going that you trusted me. I would get in trouble, not you. Yeah. So curriculum basis, that's the main criteria behind putting anything being shown video-wise, whatever. Yes, as well as don't charge. Okay. Okay. So, and and within your classroom. All right. So my online course, I'm worried about. Uh, oh, good. Okay. See, I told you I could talk about this. There's so many questions. So little time. Your online course is just like a classroom. As long as it's password protected and you boot the students out at the end of the semester. Okay, so, which is what we usually do, right? Then you can do whatever you would do in the classroom on Blackboard. Um, and I would be careful. We had, a, we had a faculty member here who's no longer here. He hasn't been here for several years, but he had file sharing going on. Okay? You, you, you can't do that because what you're doing is taking, and we'll talk about fair use uh, and what we can do, but by doing that, that's not fair use. You are taking money away from Fleetwood Mac, Jay-Z, wherever. Does that make sense? So you can do it. File sharing is not allowed. The thing I'm worried about too is uh, with the textbook, I'll probably have some videos on YouTube or whatever, and I'll be solving problems in the book with my own merit, which I'm providing something. And right. It's, you know, it could be a violation that way, but as long as I kick them out at the end of the semester. Right. It's like your classroom, right? You treat it like your classroom. The difference is if we had the Murky Castle website, and I was doing those things, right? Like um, Khan Academy, which is awesome, but that's a whole nother that is public, but they're allowing it to happen, and they watch what they do. But we have Google um, email address, drive sites, et cetera. So I built, if I build a Google site that is housed in ICC, right? It's outside of my Blackboard account, but it's housed in ICC, and therefore only ICC students could access it. And I just put the link in my Blackboard site. Okay. So links are awesome. Now, from your link, that's a little so different. I have a Google site that houses all my videos. Because rather than add every okay. single video to my Blackboard site every single right. semester, yes. I just made a Google site that has all these right. videos that I created unlisted on YouTube. Right. House them on YouTube. That's how they watch them. Because they're unlisted, so they're not available to the public. Okay. It's only available via this link, via my website, which is available via the Blackboard site. It's okay to extend that far. Right. What is your intention there? Teach. Right. <laughs> so that was rhetorical. That was, that was such a loaded question. Yeah. Um, so, and we're going to get talking about fair use. And, yeah, and this is, no, 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 no. <laughs> I love the question because I, I once again, I want to know where you want to go with this. Um, Yes, the, the fair use is to be better teachers. And that's why I want to get to fair use because it's not don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. It's look at what we can do as instructors. Okay? So, no, you're, it's all good. Okay, who owns a copyright? Yes. I have one other question on YouTube. Yes. Um, I'm very new to this. So no, I, you're good. Uh, as far as knowing what the quality of the, the network is and stuff. You know, there's YouTube downloaders, you can download the video and then just play it. What, how, how, how is that? Is that okay? Or Once again, you're using it to teach. You're using it to teach. 
Are you charging? Are you making money? Are you taking money away from them? No, actually, every time you download there, they get a little bit more money from their advertiser. YouTube is a little different than others. Okay? Yes. No, it's <laughs> no, no, no. Don't apologize. I'm wandering a little bit out of the arena, but if you create a PowerPoint and you use it to teach, and it's your own PowerPoint with all your own research and links, some of which are from YouTube, blah blah blah, and then well, then it's not all your own because you did some. Sell it. That's wrong. You just said it was all your own, but then you had things from YouTube. That's not your own. Okay. So be careful. So yes, that is wrong. Okay. Because you can use fair use, uh -huh. um, but then once you start using other material, you better get permission, and they need to know that you're going to sell this. Okay. Um, so. Even if they published it on YouTube and anybody in the world. That's can right. Watch it in the time. Well, and I would say that, you know, J.K. Rowling published lots of things, but I'm certainly not going to make copies and sell that because I might get in a little trouble, right? Even though she published it, that's the whole point, that I can't do that, okay? Okay. Most cases, the person who created a work owns a work. I'll tell you this story. This is my all-time favorite. Ken's with me on this. Um, a, and I'll go very quickly. A photographer from the UK came down to Africa, wanted to take some pictures. He gave monkeys his camera. They take picture, picture, best selfie ever. Has it, does anybody recognize this? Now, what's really interesting, the reason you don't recognize this, because it would have been the best poster, but because it got entwined in court case after court case after court case. Who owns the selfie, the photographer, or the person who had the reserve where the monkey was? Who owns it? It's the monkey? The monkey? How ridiculous of an answer is that? You're right. Right? The monkey owns it. So they said, the monkey owns it. And then they said, OK, so the monkey can't own intellectual property. Um, and I'm not going to go into, because we don't have time in all the court cases, PETA came along and said, yes, monkeys are people too. You know, so, so they, once again, a lot of court cases. A lot of intertwining in here. So they came in and said, no, the monkey should be able to own it. They finally, after years, how many years? Seven, eight years? I mean, it's been, they finally said, this is just ridiculous. They finally said, OK, the photographer can have it, but he has to give so much to the charity. And by that time, it had jumped the shark. And you know, nobody knows about this picture, which, once again, best selfie ever. Um, can you imagine the motivational posters you could have in your classroom with this? Um, this was probably nearly a decade of. Um, and in fact, somebody just told me today that they had just listened to a podcast. And I have that podcast. He just sent it to me. If you're interested in listening to the podcast, if you do podcasts at all, all on the selfie. So I haven't heard the podcast yet, but I'm planning on it. OK, who's that up in the upper left-hand corner? The original Oswald. Oswald, Oswald yes. Oswald. It's Oswald the rabbit. Look at his ears. Oswald. So Oswald the rabbit. So uh, a few years ago, there was Epic Miski um, video. Is that how you know it? Because I know because I know it's Disney stuff. OK. Excellent. Well, yes, you do. Yeah. Um, so Oswald the Rabbit. Um, this was the original. This was Disney's original animated character. They literally stole it from him. Um, and he signed away his rights, had no idea. He leaves. 
everything was stolen. This is why. So then he lopped off the ears, made it Mickey, and the rest is history. This is why Disney is really, 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 really protective of their copyright. Please don't use Disney even in fair use. Um, Ken and I, a few years ago, were going through um, and going through the years of the theater, and he was coming up with a um, video of all the years that they did different plays, different musicals in the theater. And we came to Beauty and the Beast, and we both go, no, nope, not even going to put that on. We could have. We could have used fair use, but we're not going to push that envelope. They have sued a preschool down in Florida for using their material. So I'm just saying, be careful. NFL, as well as Disney, I would not mess with. So use something else. Happy birthday to you, to you. Up until about four, three, four years ago, that was copyrighted. You could not sing that in public. That is why when you go to Applebee's or Lone Star or wherever and they're singing happy birthday, they don't sing happy birthday. They go, happy, happy birthday. They've come up with their own little jingle. That's, I know, isn't this exciting? These are the aha moments. Wow. So that is why. Oh, now it's in the public domain. Now it's in the public domain. And do you know how many emails I got when it hit the public domain, I felt like it was my own birthday. <laughs> Marky, it's in the public domain. Um, because now you could sing happy birthday. So why it was it was because they kept on reg they would they kept on re-registering it. So they were two, and it actually it wasn't even happy birthday to you, it was a good morning. It was two ladies, unmarried, no children who had done this for preschool, their nephew had the rights. Finally, it went, and they finally said, this is so in the public domain. This is so used. They just said, they, they decided, the courts decided, public domain, period. Yes? Is, isn't Steamboat uh, Mickey coming up in the public domain? Like in um, probably. Like it, and I'm just going to say, Disney just may fight that. So somebody had asked me, I heard that there's rumor that every time the law is extended that it has to do with Disney. And I said, oh, that's not a rumor. Every time it's extended, Disney has a lot of money and they want to protect it. Yes? So you, I assume, grab these images from somewhere on the internet. Yes. The yes. I'm using it to teach. I am not using, good question. Call me on the carpet on this, but I can defend this. Um, don't try, yeah. <laughs> no, you're right. I did. So this, this is from um, Boynton, Bo um, who is that? You know the person? Yeah, Lisa, yeah. So I got that. No, it's a, good, it's a good point. So she had a whole bunch of other things. I grabbed that. This was from a website that had a whole bunch of those. So I used less than 10%, gotcha. which we're going to get to. Um, this is exactly the same thing. Good point, and, and thank you. But I did use fair use. I used less than 10%. I'm not charging you for this. I will take tips on the way home. <laughs> but if you were, you would have to go there's a website called CanStock, where you I could if it's going to be on there. Go That's right. There's Creative Commons. Let me just put that. If you don't know that, please put that Creative Commons. You can get things from there that there is the licensing. It's out there. There's a lot of places to get things for free. I had somebody who wanted a particular um, song, well, song that was Puerto Rican. And I said, and she really wanted this song for this presentation. And I said, well, do you want this song or do you just want the Puerto Rican feel? She goes, I just want the Puerto Rican feel. I said, okay. So then we went to royalty free stuff. There's a lot of stuff out there that's free. So came up with several other 
songs that she could choose from. She goes, oh, this is good. So instead of just taking something that I would have to pay for, you can find things that are doable. And that is what I do. So you want to do this, I will, um, I will find something that makes it free or legal. This is copyrighted, not trademarked in anything, Batmobile, because, I'll tell you real quick, it was in a comic book first. So the, the design was in a comic book, that's why they got it. Okay, who owns copyright? When work made for hire situation occurs, the ownership rules change. I'm not going to ask you, I'll just tell you, Gatorade came from Florida, right? Florida State, that was the big, when they started it, the chemistry teacher, the, the, the football coach went to the chemistry teacher, said, we need something, this was back in the 60s, we need something to help our guys, they're dropping like flies. The chemistry teacher, and, and just listen to this, the chemistry teacher went back to his lab at the school, not his lab, the school's lab, came up with this concoction, gave it to the coach, and said, here you go. The coach used it, said, this is fantastic, although it tasted horrible, but it was exactly what they needed. Pepsi came and said, I think it was like a million dollars. We want to give you a million dollars. Florida came in and said, no, 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 you did that under work made for hire. Goes to court, who wins? Right. So if somebody came to me and said, I really want something to a drug to help people really appreciate copyright, whatever. I better go home, do what I want to do at home, and then deal with that, as opposed to using ICC's material, etc. This wonderful PowerPoint, I used ICC's computer, I used the resources, I used, this belongs to ICC, it does not belong to me. Make sense? Which of course, when you write books, if anybody's written a book, that's a little different. ICC, as well as academia, wants you to write those books. But you don't do it on their time. Does that make sense? OK. OK. Documents are not protected. Uh, documents by the US government are not protected by copyright. So anything you find that's .gov, not .org, but .gov, that's a government document, Use it as you wish. Um, things at the Smithsonian, that's documents. That, that is, I'm sorry, government. You can use that because it's the government. I'm going to go through this a little because we're, I want to get to, and please, if you want to see these slides, please email me, mcastle at icc.edu. Um, and, but I want to get to fair use, and I only have five minutes. Um, I will be more than happy to send this to you. I also will be more than happy to go through, if you don't understand it, and clarify. There are four guidelines of fair use, purpose and character of the use, including whether such of the commercial or nonprofit educational purposes. So I work for ICC. My husband worked for Caterpillar. We would laugh at what I could do and what he could do. He could do nothing. I could do a lot, <laughs> right? Um, that's because I work for a nonprofit educational um, institution. The nature of the copyrighted work, is it fact or is it fiction? Facts in themselves are not copyrightable. One plus two equals three is not copyrightable. But one chair plus two desks equals the start of a classroom. That's more imaginative, that could be copyrightable. Make sense? Not real imaginative, but you know. The amount and substantiality of the portion used. So how much can I use? Who knows? 10%. Hmm? 10%. 10%. Well, how do you know that? Because I told you. <laughs> Smart man. See, and they come back. 10%. Um, but it doesn't say that in that 326 pages. They just make it vague. Lawyers, teachers, 
publishers all came together and tried to decide what was going to be the guideline. And they came up with 10%. Now, I was in a, um, in a conference, and there was a guy who was a Harvard law professor. So I don't know. His credentials are a little you know, valid. And, he, and I would say 10%, no more than 10%, because that's what I was taught. He goes, oh, 10, 11, 12. You just need to be within there. And I'm like, OK, that's the law for you. Um, so keep it around 10%. So you have a book, and you want to use this chapter in it. Well, if it's 10%, you have every right to do that. This is where to be good instructors. Yes? So like, I'm in AIT, and we have manuals. And like, if I want an image off of a manual just to put into a PowerPoint. OK, yes. Now, now we're also talking, yes, and that is 10%. We're also talking when you transfer the medium. So everybody has their, even if you wanted to do the book, to be able to show it on a screen, you can do that. It's just transfer the medium. Difference is don't do that and then sell it to the students for 20 bucks a piece, right? Does strictly that, for, for education. That's right. That's right. So then we get to the last, the effect of the use upon the potential market. This is key, people. This is key. Are we taking money away from the publisher, the author, whomever? This is what's key. I had a discussion with a, um, the lawyer um, who oversees copyright for the state of Indiana. And she said she has never seen a um, case that this was not the main so these are important. This is key. So when I start running things, don't, you know, in the paralegal program, we had a workbook that was like this big. It was like 50, 60 bucks. I so wanted to make copies. It would have been a lot cheaper. Well, I cannot do that. Absolutely cannot do that because it's taking away from the author and the publishers. Does that make sense? OK, we're almost there. Fair use, but I want clear-cut answers. <clears throat> they are vague, and they're that so we can make that determination. The thing is, what is your intention? You know, and that's the important thing. I'm just going to go. So information. Copyright clearance, and we may be going to that. The problem is, and we've had a couple people do this, they just submitted it when it could have been used under fair use, and they were charged for it, which goes to the students. But that's why I want to do fair use and not do use the Copyright Clearance Center, because it's basically a licensing agreement that you pay those extra, um, you pay for that. So somebody had something for the class that it cost like $7. Now, that's not a big deal, but you know, times how many it can um, add up. The web is not public domain. Royalty free does not mean free. And I have five more seconds. Catch 22, digital rights. And, and this is pretty self-explanatory, pertinent case law. There's some really good, so Kinko's, for people who are my age or older, which is like nobody here, but at every corner of the universities, there was a Kinko's. At U of I, there was a big Kinko's across from the alma mater, right? The reason it's not there is because of copyright. They were infringing. They were doing educational packets, and they were brought to their knees. Now they're in a strip mall with FedEx. So they were king. They were king. OK, M. Castle, please, if you, want the, um, if you want the PowerPoint or if you want to discuss anything, I am there. I know this was quick. I hope you got something out of it. Um, and even those people who came back for you know, the second time, it's different stuff. You know? So OK, thank you. Are you here every day?